Well, 2020 is finally behind us, and hopefully 2021 has some great things in store. We're going to kick the new year off with an inspiring basketball player from the Seattle area. That's this week's five-star feature. There's a certain sense of pride in the basketball community in Seattle. From youth leagues all the way up to the professionals, any basketball player who's ever called Seattle home is proud to do so. Paulo Bancaro knows all about it. It's like a big family. You know, everybody who comes out of here, they always come back and they always, you know, give back to the up and coming players like me and you know, other people. You can name any pro from here and I guarantee you I've talked to them. Jamal Crawford, um, I text him all the time. Spencer Hawes and uh, DeJounte Murray, the three that I talk to the most. Paulo's mother, Rhonda, is also well-versed in the Seattle basketball scene. A former standout at Franklin High School, she graduated from the University of Washington as a program's all-time leading scorer and went on to play professionally. South Seattle has been a hotbed. Maybe it's because kids didn't have a lot to do. Maybe it's because it rains a lot here. And so an inside sport was something that was going to be more um, attractive to um, some up and coming athletes. But um, Seattle's always been, you know, just a really special place. We've been really lucky here to have cultivated the type of talent that we have out of the city. Tradition is certainly something Paulo can appreciate. It's one reason he attends O'Day High School. His father, grandfather, and a number of other family members attended the all-boys school located near downtown Seattle. And when O'Day teams have won championships, there's often been a Bancaro involved. That includes two for Paulo. As a freshman, he was a backup quarterback for O'Day's state champion football team. And then as a sophomore, he led O'Day to a state title in basketball. My dad graduated from here, um, so it was, a, it was a family thing. Um, my brother graduated from here, um, several cousins, I think out of the 20-something state championships, we've got family on about 14 of them, something like that. So, so a lot of bank heroes and, and, uh, and related family have been through here. The interesting thing for me is that I think my experience um, was real similar to my dad's. Uh, obviously, the times have changed and cultures changed and things like that. But a lot of the things that Paulo brings home and talks about are, are similar experiences as well. So I think what O'Day does a great job of is really, you know, raising quality young guys and. Uh, Helping them, helping them develop into, into strong young men. It's great. I can come here and I don't get treated no, you know, any special kind of way. I'm treated like everybody else. You know, I don't, I'm not put on a pedestal. You know, everyone, you know, sees me as, you know, one of them as a student. So, you know, it's good just being able to come here and just be myself. While his teachers and classmates may not treat him any differently, opponents on the basketball court have to. Paulo's a consensus five-star prospect and a top three player overall in the 2021 class. He's a six foot 10 inch forward who can play any position at the high school level and his ceiling as a pro seems limitless. Yeah, I think I'm really, you know, versatile. I'm a team player. I can score whenever I want. I can find others and get others involved. And uh, you know, I can really do whatever the team needs me to do, whether that's locking up the other team's best player, um, rebounding, you know, passing, scoring, whatever the team needs me to do, I can do. This is probably the first time that you will ever hear me talk about all the things I like about his game because I'm a big, critiquer of his game usually, but he has been committed and passionate and he really enjoys being in the gym. He probably has more of getting more of my persona on the court, which I'm I'm proud of. And so he's really honed his skill set so that they can't just guard him for one thing. And I, I really enjoy that. I think I can do everything. I can be a primary or secondary ball handler. You know, I can play forward, you know, play the wing. You know, I think that part of that comes from not playing the guard in the wing. Um, growing up because I wasn't the tallest. I was always sort of tall, but I was never the tallest. So I always played on the wing and played guard. And then once I got, you know, taller, I uh, still possessed those skills. So I was able to you know, translate that to the position I play now. As he's become more well-known, Paulo has come to realize there's a responsibility that comes with fame. Just like the professional players he looks up to, Paulo wants to make his community better. This past summer, as several social justice protests were happening across the country, Paulo decided it was time to tell a story he had only previously shared with his parents. He wanted to tell everyone about an encounter with police when he and a friend had a gun pulled on them. And then all of a sudden the cop comes, you know, to the window, windows are slowed down, and he got his gun drawn. And uh, he's real aggressive, he's, you know, he's cussing at us, saying all kinds of stuff, you know, don't move, all that. Fortunately, no one was harmed, but Paulo wanted to spread awareness and to hopefully help others stay safe in their communities. And at first, you know, we didn't want any attention. We didn't want, you know, no one, we just didn't want it out. You know, we didn't want no one to know about it. So we didn't ever tell anyone. Um, only our families knew, really. Uh, 
And then after, you know, George, seeing this video of George, George Floyd, um, you know, he actually, you know, messaged me and was like, hey man, I think, you know, we should, we should talk about it. Like, you know, I think it's, it's time, you know? And uh, yeah, I just was, you know, I agreed and, you know, we did. And I was asked to come speak at a thing, at a rally. And so, you know, I had no problem doing it. All the parents out there who, you know, are parents of colored kids, if you haven't had that talk with your kids yet, um, on what to do when they encounter the police, um, I encourage you to have it because um, I feel like that talk that me and Noah had, you know, before that um, saved our life. Well, I mean, I think as a parent, um, certainly as a, a black woman myself, um, I think that you hope that your kids will have a different experience than what you had, um, but you always know in the back of your mind that they're probably going to have a, a lot of similar experiences that you have, unfortunately. The most important thing um, and what we're, we're proud of is how he's handled it and how he has chosen to use his voice as a young person to share his story and ultimately influence other young people. I think it's really important. I'm kind of, I would say, new to having a big platform. So I'm just kind of realizing you know, how important it is to use it. And yeah, I mean, you if you can inspire others, then you know, you're doing something right. Paulo's platform to inspire change is only going to grow in the years to come. He's committed to the Duke Blue Devils for next season. And there's a good chance he could be a top pick in the 2022 NBA draft. You know, I think my dream has kind of progressed as I've gotten older and gotten better. I knew I wanted to be an athlete. I just didn't know what sport or how far. But yeah, now, you know, I want to not just make the NBA, but be in the NBA a long time, you know, be an all-star. It might sound lofty and all that, but I want to win a championship, do all those great things, on, and hopefully have a Hall of Fame career. So. That's my end goal. Yeah, I think the goal for, for from us, for all of our kids, is that they have the opportunity to be immensely successful in something that they love. And really, that would be the culmination of that for Paulo, is he loves basketball, and so to reach that level. We're super proud that we were able to provide him with opportunities, and then he took it upon himself to really carry the opportunity in terms of practice and, and making sure that, you know, he was honing his talent. So. For us, we're, we're ecstatic and we're happy that he's found a passion um, that he loves and, and hopefully he'll be able to get paid for it one day. Thanks for checking out Sports Stars of Tomorrow on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and please subscribe to our channel so you see all of the latest content.